It's always a good way to start. <laughs> Gets your adrenaline going. So this is the ambulance drone. It's a high-speed drone that is capable of going to any emergency location within minutes. It carries on board critical emergency supplies that can be used to save lives. In case of cardiac arrest, for example, this decrease in response time leads to a dramatic increase in the survival rates. So what this drone really does is it looks in a new way to emergency response. Instead of centralizing everything into one area where the ambulances are, it creates a network across the country to decrease these response times. It's really a new way to look at emergency response. So now that I have your attention, what I would like to talk to you about tonight is not what I've just um, mentioned. That is not my idea I want to spread. Instead, what I think is much more interesting for you and much more valuable uh, to share with you tonight is the whole story that I went through in creating this drone, but also everything that came afterwards. So what you see here is a rare glimpse behind the scenes of the creation of this drone. What you're seeing here is me and a friend of mine, uh, Sami, lying on the floor, and we're working on creating the video that we wanted to, uh, in which we wanted to sketch the whole scenario that I've just talked to you about. Um, and since this conference is all about beta products, etc., what we were actually doing here is folding the arms of the drone, because that was part of the concept, that this would fold automatically. But in fact, it didn't. We were doing this manually, out of focus from the camera. Um, another thing that you don't see in this picture is that I'm wearing a casket around my knee. In fact, the day before that we shot this video, I had a knee operation. I had a knee operation, the type that would usually require you to stay in the hospital for a few days and stay at home for a few weeks. So why would anyone be so stupid of putting his health on the line in order to create a video? Well, I would say that the moment that I decided that I did not want to apply for a patent, that I did not want to start my own company, but instead I wanted to show the world that things could be done differently. For once, drones could be used in a very good way instead of the bad way, but the bad way that we usually see them. So, I really put a lot of effort uh, together with friends of mine into creating this, and the result was that we actually managed. We actually managed to share to the world what um, this idea was all about. So this project went completely viral. In fact, a lot of media uh, started covering this story, um, and that was exactly what I wanted to achieve. I wanted to facilitate this whole discussion, uh, and I wanted to get people's reactions of what this really embodied, and that was a new way of looking at drones. So I actually succeeded in what I wanted to do, and that that's, was really an amazing experience for me, that I, even though I, I had this vision of sharing with the world, you never really expect that the world would actually listen. But in fact, they did. And with all of this attention, there, came also, there was also another side of the story, uh, and that was that a lot of people have their own opinion, not so much about the drone, but what I needed to do. I've said to you before that I did, want, I did not want to apply for a patent, I did not want to start my own company. But the moment that this got so popular, that's exactly what people started to tell me. So, if that many people are actually telling you to do something, well, I started doing what they were telling me. I started running to the patent office saying, we need to protect this as much as we still can. Um, 
and, and I'm going to start my own company, company and I'm going to go to venture capitalists uh, and, and raise capital. And a lot of investors were actually willing to put a lot of money into something which was really an idea. It was just, it was just a prototype and there was no company yet. And it was in that moment that a friend of mine, in fact, the same friend that was stupid enough to lie on the floor there with me, um, asked me, how is what you're doing right now contributing to where you see yourself in five years from now? In other ways, what he was really asking me is, do you, want, do you still want to be Mr. Drone in five years from now? Well, no, I didn't. I knew that ideas are only worth as much as their implementation. And I felt that I couldn't really achieve that with the ambulance drone in a short time frame, at least not in five years from now. But rest assured, we are developing this further here at the university. But my personal vision was that I could create, yeah, to have much more impact on the world if I would focus on where I wanted to get to. So, what did I learn from the drone? What did the drone teach me? And more importantly, what can you all take away from my story? I would say that it's a lot more important to know why you do what you do than to do the what. And in the first phase, in the first phase, I had a clear vision. I wanted to show the world, and that was what I was uh, aiming for. But the moment that I drifted away from that, I was just going on autopilot mode. Pardon, pardon the pun. Um, and I was just doing things in order to do things. But the moment that I re oriented myself and redefined where I wanted to get, that was what, when really I was able to make decisions like, no, this is not what I want. Um, and I was able to, do, to make the right decisions, even though they might sound like the wrong decisions to many people, um, but that's not what's important. So I think Simon Sinek said it, said it best um, in his TED talk, where he talked about, uh, he was addressing companies and he said that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So he was giving the example of Apple that it's so important for companies to know why they do things, because that's what differentiates Apple from the rest. They know exactly why they do things. So why should we as people be any different? Why should we as people not need to have this vision of where we want to be so that we can do whatever we do in our everyday lives put in purpose of that? So if I ask you the question, what did you do today and how is that contributing to where you want to be in five years from now? I believe that if I leave you with anything in this talk, then it is the importance of knowing that for yourself. It truly helped me to find my purpose again. So, what did I learn from this drone? It is that the moment that he knows what his destination is, he knows exactly in which direction he needs to put all of his effort, all of his energy. Similarly, the moment that I knew where I wanted to get, I was able to do exactly the same and make the tough decisions that I needed to make. So, now I ask the question to you, is where do you see yourself in five years from now? What is your destination? Thank you. <laughs>